Hey everyone, welcome back to the Thinking Crypto channel, your home for crypto news and interviews. Guys, I've got big updates to share with you all. Congressman Tom Emmer, who is a crypto advocate, has submitted a letter to Chairman Powell of the Federal Reserve talking about the need for crypto regulation. So I want to share the details there because this is important. We're seeing more activity from Congress to push for regulatory clarity, and this is going to the Fed chair. So I think this is significant. And of course, we know it's important with regards to the SEC and their lack of crypto regulations, Gary Gensler's overreach, and we see the trouble he's causing with Coinbase and different exchanges, stable coins, and the Ripple XRP lawsuit. Now, on the topic of Ripple and the lawsuit, uh, Charles Gasparino is going to have attorney John Deaton on the show. So this lawsuit is getting more exposure, guys, and you know John Deaton's going to bring the fire and the details here. Um, so I want to share the updates around that. We'll, we're also going to talk about El Salvador. They just released a video showing... The mining has started using volcanic energy. This is huge, guys. This is huge. So I want to share that video with you. And also there's a big update around uh, banking and, and uh, Bitcoin as well in El Salvador. We also have Securitize, the tokenization platform, launching a marketplace and many other big updates. I'm going to break it all down for you guys. Before we do, go ahead and hit the thumbs up button leave a comment below and hit the subscribe button if you're new here. It helps support the channel and it doesn't cost you anything. Guys, this video is brought to you by OKCoin Crypto Exchange where you can buy, sell and trade your favorite cryptocurrencies and you don't have to pay high fees. OKCoin charges low fees. You can also stake your crypto and keep 100% of the rewards. You don't have to pay uh, any fees to keep all those crypto rewards that you stake and earn. OKCoin is the only exchange you can buy Miami coin. In fact, there's a great promo happening now running until October 7th. Buy $30 of Miami coin and get $30 worth of USDT free money. So why not get a go and grab some Miami coin and earn that uh, nice reward there, guys. So sign up, link in the description. Um, earlier today, I uploaded my interview with Halsey Miner, who's an internet legend. This man founded CNET, co-founded Salesforce. He's the founder of Uphold Crypto Exchange. He's, he was here in the internet, uh, in the early days of the internet building. He worked with Jeff Bezos on some interesting projects before Amazon, guys. He is a legend. He's bullish on crypto. He's uh, the founder of VideoCoin, and he's doing some great things. So be sure to check it out. Uh, it's a great interview, and it's amazing to see uh, these folks who were internet entrepreneurs and pioneers and now into crypto. That further validates the market and what is happening in this space, guys. All right, let's take a look at the market here. Not much happening, as we've been talking about. Wake me up when September ends, <laughs> because we uh, have seen historically September is not a good performing month for even stocks, right? But let alone crypto. So our red candle is forming here. As I've been saying for a long time, I'm waiting for a bounce up. I think maybe into uh, early October, we'll start seeing some movement upward. But right now, it's just a waiting game. And here, plan B kind of double down on that. Um, he's the creator of the Bitcoin stock to flow model, saying the following, to be clear, worst case floor slash floor model is not, I repeat, not based on the stock to flow. It is based on price and on-chain data, like I wrote in June, in the June tweet, uh, June 20th tweet below. So great that August closed above $47,000 and September is now around $43,000, but it says nothing about stock to flow. Stock to flow says approximately $100,000 for now. So he was uh, saying back in June that August would close around 47,000, September 43,000. So anticipating the pullback, right? Um, and, but October would close uh, around uh, $63,000, November $98,000, December $135,000. Now, is that a guarantee or a certainty? No, but based on the math, right? And the historical patterns and trends, this is what uh, he came up with using that stock to flow model. So uh, we have to take it for what it is, but with a grain of salt, there's, a, there's gonna be a margin of error here. No one can accurately predict the future unless you have a time machine. So I do think Bitcoin will hit six figures. Uh, will it happen exactly in December or could it spill over to January? That's a possibility. We'll just have to wait and see. 
Either way, I'm prepared to cash out at certain prices to take profits. And that's the same way you should be looking at it. And obviously, we've seen as Bitcoin pumps, alt follow Bitcoin's lead. And there's an alt season, right, where you can make, uh, I think, higher returns on altcoins. So uh, just be prepared. And look, at this point, if you want to step away from looking at the market, because the red candles, the, the drop in price gets you a bit worried or depressed, do it, right? You shouldn't be looking at this stuff every single day. Take a break, right? Go do other things. So it's just some helpful tips that I personally learned. Um, even though I make content every day talking about the market, I'm also making sure that I'm, I'm using my mind, cutting off the, the prices, not looking at the prices, going to do things, go for a walk, go out and do different things, right? Enjoy life. So my, my entire world is not revolving around crypto. So I know that some of you may know this and you got it down pack, but it's mainly for the new people in the market, right? Who, who are maybe looking at this every day um, and still trying to learn, but you got to give yourself a break. Now, Binance CEO CZ tweeted something that I agreed about, and I've talked about it a, a bit as well in, the, in previous videos. He tweeted, four years ago this month, so talking about September, Bitcoin made an all-time high of $5,000 on September 1st, then crashed to $3,000 by September 14th. The rest well, you know, see, see below. <laughs> so we know what happened, right? And I, I shared the, the news the other day where this same month in 2017, China issued a ban on crypto exchanges, right? So it's, it's almost like history repeating <laughs> and rhyming a bit too close here. So uh, these pullbacks don't matter. What matters is the macro. And we see the macro is pointing to higher prices. We're still in a bull market. We still have a leg to go here. And I think uh, a lot of money is going to be made in this next leg. Um, but, you know, we have to be cautiously optimistic as well. Sometimes black swan events happen and we can't control these things. No one can predict them and they, they can affect the market. But I do think that uh, there's a higher probability of a bull run than a bear market. Now, a bear market will come after we hit that blow off top. So just be prepared for that. All right. Congressman Tom Emmer, who I've interviewed on the channel, a uh, great gentleman um, out of Minnesota, and uh, he's a big crypto advocate, of course. He has put forth many different bills, one including the Securities Clarity Act. Well, check this out, what he tweeted today. Today, I sent a bipartisan support, excuse me, a bi bipartisan letter to Federal Reserve Chairman Jerome Powell highlighting the need for private sector digital asset innovation. I love this, guys. And I think the key takeaway here is bipartisan. This is not a Republican or a Democrat issue. You have both sides of the aisle here. And he thanked, he thanked his colleagues. He said, thanks to my colleagues, uh, Representative Ro Khanna, Darren Soto, Congressman uh, Glenn Thompson, Representative Frank Lucas, uh, Representative Eric Swalwell, uh, and Representative Ted Budd for joining me in this effort. This is awesome, guys. Let me read a bit of this um, to you. It says, Dear Chairman Powell, on July 14th, 2021, uh, you appeared before the House Financial Services Committee and provided insight on the Federal Reserve's work on developing a central bank digital currency. Uh, your concerns about stablecoin regulation uh, and your view of, that a CBDC would undermine the need for a de decentralized digital assets. Um, in light of these comments, we would like to know if and how you, the Federal Reserve Board of Governors, intend to support domestic innovation and widespread adoption of digi uh, de decentralized digital assets. To that end, we would like answers to the following questions. One, in the United States, digital assets are subject to overlapping regulation from multiple regulators, including the Federal Reserve Board, the Financial Crimes Enforcement Network, the SEC, the CFTC, and others. The adoption of cryptocurrency has been hobbled by a lack of regulatory clarity addressing such matters such as custody, tax policy, accounting practices, and other vital requirements. Um, so I'm not going to read the entire thing. You can certainly go pull this up, but that's kind of the takeaway, right? Asking, hey, we've got this melting pot of a whole bunch of crap here. <laughs> we need clarity. So it's going to obviously... A, a high power in the government, so to speak. They, look, they print the money, right? <laughs> um, and let's see where this goes, guys. But this is what we want to see as crypto investors. 
we need clarity in the United States. So this is uh, this is awesome. Um, you know, he tweeted his um, his thoughts on this in in a link to um, his website, talking about he's urging the Fed chair. So he said, decentralized digital assets like crypto give everyday investors democratic access to financial services. Government action must support private sector innovation and not compete with it. Love it. Shout out to Congressman Tom Emmer. Um, he will certainly be remembered as one of the uh, leaders in, in this innovation and new asset class. So this is awesome. All right. There's a lot to cover here with Charles Gasparino of Fox Business, who has been covering crypto regulations, the SEC, the situation with Genser, the Ripple XRP lawsuit. So let me read out some of the things he called out here, guys. Uh, today, he tweeted, he, sa he said, stay tuned. Eleanor, Tourette, and I will be putting together a detailed summary of various alleged conflicts of interest, including the SEC's case against Ripple. By the way, conflicts don't necessarily mean causation, but full disclosure is always necessary for debate. Hashtag XRP community. He also tweeted the following. The difference between AMC Ape Crowd and XRP community is pretty obvious. The XRP Ripple case has some real meat conflicts regarding SEC and potential favoritism that hurt Ripple. Ape attacks against cities, uh, city Citadel securities are devoid of substance, just wild conspiracy theories. <laughs> well, I kind of disagree with him on, on you know divide of uh, devoid of substance because um, we know guys how this game works with Melvin Capital, Citadel, and Robinhood, and so forth. So I think that there is some. Uh, you know, some credence here to uh, why people were upset, right? Um, are they 100% accurate? No, but yeah, yeah, yeah. Is there some conspiracy theories in it? Yes, but there is some, you know, credibility here to what a lot of these people on Reddit were saying and why they went after Melvin Capital, even with the GameStop situation and so forth. So I, I wouldn't paint it with a broad stroke like he did, but nevertheless, I get what he's saying, you know, at the end of the day, the folks on Reddit were just um, punching back against Wall Street. Um, it, it's just it's just a game of back and forth and betting on the market. But with Ripple and XRP, this is like halting innovation, right, for the rest of the market, including Ripple and XRP. And it's like, okay, what are we doing here? Companies are trying to build. They're trying to create jobs. They're trying to bring solutions and to, to make people's lives better. So I obviously bigger bigger situation um, with, with much more legs here. So um, someone, you know, kind of uh, called him out on this saying, hey, don't downplay this with the uh, GameStop AMC thing. And, and he said here to answer, I'm all about evidence and the XRP simply has the better evidence. So shout out to XRP holders because a, a lot of folks have been sharing video clips and blog posts and articles and a lot of stuff. So, you know, it's not like we're just, here ranting and making stuff up, we have hard evidence. And uh, and here you're going to see John Deaton, attorney John Deaton, who I've interviewed multiple times on my channel. He's going to be on Fox Business, Crypto Friday, this coming up Friday to talk about this, guys. This is awesome, man. John Deaton is doing some great work. And uh, he's I think he's going to go out there and drop some truth bombs and expose the SEC. So this, this is amazing. Um, Okay, guys, this is so bullish. I I'm super excited about this. President Nayib Bukele, of course, the president of, of El Salvador, tweeted, first steps, hashtag Bitcoin, Bitcoin with a volcano uh, emoji here. Let me play the video clip. There's not really any words, but it shows um, they are setting up the mining rigs and are obviously using the volcanic um, power here, guys. Let me, let me play it for you. Once again, there, there, there's no words. It's just sound of the trucks loading up here, setting up the miner, uh, the miners, the mining machines, I should, or rigs, I should say. Pretty cool. Um, I don't care if you love or hate Bitcoin. This is a solution that fixes, um, you know, the, the, the energy criticism because it's using renewable energy guys it's using clean energy so this is awesome and you know in the united states we we may see this like ah oh, whatever who cares 
you know, because or, or maybe in the more developed worlds, right, or, or countries, but in countries like El Salvador and, and some others where the currency is not strong, they don't have high, high GDP and so forth. This is massive, guys. And, and I can see other countries doing the same. I think we're going to see a lot of countries follow El Salvador's move. So the future is exciting. Um, here's another example of adoption in El Salvador. Bitcoin salaries in El Salvador can now be paid through ATM maker Athena. Uh, massive infrastructure set up here once again. And this, this is starting with Bitcoin, but it's eventually going to go to all coins, right? Bitcoin is once again, usually the gateway to doorway, whatever analogy you want to make here. And then it will lead to adoption of all coins as well. So great for the entire asset class. Now, Carlos Domingo, who is the founder and CEO of Securitize, uh, he uh, tweeted the following today, and, and this uh, along with the big news, they are launching Securitize Market, a, a, a uh, secondary trading marketplace to sell and, and trade uh, security tokens. Now, I believe a couple of years ago, I had interviewed their president uh, and co-founder, Jamie Finn, and... Yes. Yeah. So here I have two interviews from two years ago, guys. So they've been doing their thing since like 2017, where they are helping uh, companies and people to build to tokenize products. So you can tokenize, if, let's say an NBA player like LeBron James wanted to tokenize his NBA contract, they would be the folks to do it. If you had an artwork or some rare car you wanted to tokenize, they would be the ones to do it. They help put, uh, you know, create those security tokens, because that's what they are. And it will be on the blockchain. Um, and this is the future, guys, the token economy. So they are building that marketplace now, where you can, uh, once again, trade and buy, sell and trade and so forth. That's, that's pretty amazing. They are ahead of the curve. And I, I when I interviewed their president, Jamie Finn, years ago, I was like, wow, this, this is going to be big. And you, know, you see, it takes time, it takes years, right? To to get going, to get con convinced um, uh, different uh, customers and firms and institutions and individuals to, to, to adopt this. So uh, now any small investor can go trade them. This, this is pretty cool. Finally, CFTC hits Kraken with $1.25 million in fines over alleged illegal offering. So this is not really a big deal. $1.25 million is like a drop in the bucket for for these guys uh but let me give you the details margin leverage or financial digital asset trading offered to us to retail us customers must occur on properly registered and regulated exchanges in accordance with all applicable laws and regulations said vincent mcgonagall oh uh mcgonagall couldn't pronounce that for a second the cftc's acting director of enforcement so just an FYI, I think it's just a slap on the wrist, nothing major. And, and it's because they're putting all these regulations in place, um, you know, to a certain degree, we need full regulatory clarity, but, you know, uh, with regards to derivatives and futures trading, um, you know, the big boys like the CME and, and all these guys are not on BlackRock are not just going to let you walk in and, and as a crypto exchange and just start offering that you got to go get your license and get fully regulated and all that. But, Something as to know as far as an FYI. So guys, uh, we just got to be patient. Like I said, I think Q4 is going to bring some fireworks. Uh, patience is the key here, as it always has been in the crypto market. Um, you know, if you if you've been here long enough, I think you you probably start to see that now. Being patient and being patient, and your patience pays off as the bull run starts. Just remember how amazing it was from like November of last year into uh, July of this year, where we saw Bitcoin go to 65K, ETH over 3K, near 4K, um, just prices going crazy, right? I think that's coming again with new all-time highs. But just as we had to wait all of 2020 into the end of 2020, and even before that, those of you who've been with me for uh, through the bear market for years, patience my friends. Um, so let me know what you guys think. Hit the thumbs up button, share this video, and I'll talk to you all later.